Okay, so welcome to our Moxie Monday. It is February 6th. Um, I have been on the edge of my seat excited to hear from Colleen. Colleen is a two-time elite coach. She is a six-figure earner. She's an organizational leader on the leadership ladder. Um, last year, she was ranked 100. Her and her team were 130, um, 135. Like, they are doing enormous things. And what's funny is, like, just this past hour, we've been chit-chatting back and forth, and I feel like I just learned so much about you. <laughs> I feel like we need a hug now. So um, I adore you so much, Colleen. Thank you so much for giving us your time and even being open to talk to a team you know nothing about, um, but sharing your passion for having the right mindset of shifting from just like casually doing this maybe to being a CEO. Um, I'm excited to hear from you and learn from you. Um, and I hope that everyone has, look, I do, because I'm going to be teachable. I have my notepad out because I would love to learn from Colleen. So guys, I'm going to pass it over to her and let's learn some stuff. Hello, everyone. Um, and it's so funny. I really was just interrogating Laura. I'm like, so how do you do this? And how do you do that? Because I'm like a sponge. I want to know everything. I want to know it now. And when she asked me, do you want to do a Zoom or YouTube? I'm like, please Zoom because I am obsessed with this topic of mindset and becoming a CEO because I'm going to share my story with you and you can all laugh at my hilarious hot mess story and we can talk about where I am today. Um, and the reason I've become obsessed with this topic is because I feel like for 27 years of my life, before I started coaching, I had these questions of how am I ever going to be successful? There's more I want in life. And I was totally the victim for my whole life. And now I had so many, I hate to say the word, aha moments. I've had experiences, life lessons. And so I love Zoom because I'm going to feed off of you guys. And I hope that you guys do take notes. I talk fast. I'm originally from New England, so I do talk fast. Um, but I hope to share my heart with you. And then you have to promise me that at the end, you guys will have a couple questions for me because I get all excited and pumped up and I feel like a deer in the headlights and then everyone just stares at me. So if there's any questions you guys have, whether it's about your business, my business, any advice, I am here to help you. Okay. So the, this topic is going to be kind of a mix of mastering your mindset to become to, or to have that transition from coach to CEO. Now, there's nothing wrong with being a coach. I'm a coach, we're all coaches. But I have become, again, I use the word obsessed a lot, obsessed with what's the difference between unsuccessful people and successful people? We all have that like million dollar question, right? Like really, what is the deal? How do I grow this? How do I do this? And I call myself the guinea pig where the universe has basically given me almost every and any challenge I'm only 31 years old, and I'm sure there's many more to come. I've been the guinea pig so that I can help people realize that they can do hard things. And I learned this year that leadership, <clears throat> excuse me, leadership is about being able to transfer the belief that you have inside. You all believe in Beachbody, right? You're like, this is the best thing since sliced bread. Why isn't everyone doing this? At least that's how I feel. So you have to become really good at being able to transfer that unwavering belief that's inside of you to others. That is where you're going to find success. So today I'm going to break down some mindset stuff. I'm going to break down hopefully some barriers. I'm super real deal kind of coach. Any, any tough love is honest love or it's love still, okay? And the only way that I've been able to overcome my challenges throughout my stories when I look in the mirror and I say, girl, you got this every single day. And if I'm being honest, that's pretty, everyone's like, have you done it? How did you get over paths over your struggles? I'll talk about those today. I look in the mirror and I say, girl, you got this. I don't lay in bed and just, and trust me guys, I've been depressed. I've lost my job. I've hit rock bottom. I've laid in bed. I've swam in the darkness. I've been there, but now I didn't want to feel like that anymore. So you look in the mirror and you say, I got this. Okay. So a little bit about me, 31 years old, I live in Lake Tahoe, California. So that's like way Northern. I don't live on the beach. I live in the mountains where we just got um, 80 inches of snow in 24 hours like last week. So super crazy. And I have a hat on because I look like a wet rat. My hair got wet outside today. So um, normally I don't have a hat on on calls, but I moved out here when I was 24. So I've been here um, nine years now. And when I grew up in Boston, it's funny because it was kind of like a completely different planet to where I am right now. Like I literally need different planets. I was raised in 
such an amazing way. And I had a big realization today that my upbringing shaped a lot of my success today. So don't take what I'm about to say as I'm hating on New England or anything like that. New England taught me discipline, work ethic. You work hard to play hard. But the thing is where I grew up is there's no living outside the box. There's no adventure. There's, and it's funny because my whole team's from the East Coast, like literally my whole team. But when I moved out to the mountains, I now know why hippies hug trees. <laughs> I literally have that experience of like nature is amazing. And I'm totally kind of down with the whole spiritual thing. I've learned so much from experience. So if I had stayed in Massachusetts, I don't know where I'd be. I've learned so much about myself. I packed up my things, moved 3,000 miles. I did work for Verizon Wireless back in the day. It was a job, a career job for six years. I got out of school, right out of college, and I did very well. I managed a multi-million dollar retail location at the age of 23, and I'm not trying to boast, but I was really proud of that. And then when I moved out here, it was all taken away from me. So I ended up finding out that I worked for literally the devil when I moved out here. So here I am in this amazing clayland, amazing, like it was a dream to live here. And then I had to go into this terrible job for 50 hours a week. And it was like bashing my head against the wall. So if you guys have a situation in your life where you're like, I cannot take this anymore, I've been there. Not only have I been there where I wasn't sleeping, I was partying, I racked up $20,000 of credit card debt, this boss made me feel this big and I was a successful businesswoman and she used that power, man. <laughs> and I felt like a puppet. So I come into work one day and I thought we had this meeting. I found out that she transferred me to a store and I was like, Ooh, awesome. I don't have to work for this terrible boss anymore. And then when she transferred me and I got a new apartment, I got laid off. So she knew the store was closing and she had the power because she didn't like me and she moved me there. Guys, when I tell you I had the experience of I will never let someone tell me how much I earn or I will never let someone tell me when to show up or any of that or to, you know, a regular job as an employee, and we're going to talk about that today, you, you have this box. Do not leave the box, right? Like, this is your job task. Do not leave the box. And if you do, you get in trouble. As an entrepreneur, you have to live outside the box. Right? We have our daily behaviors. There's all these things that you have to do. But for example, getting vulnerable, sharing a before and after picture, that's not in the box, that's outside the box. So having this experience of, I never want to live in that tiny little toxic box ever again, I decided I will never go back to that environment. Now you have to remember, I came from a background where you go to school, you get good grades, my sister's a doctor, my mother's a chemist, my dad's in real estate and IT, and then there's me. Okay, and I had to claim and own what my gut and my heart wanted, otherwise I was gonna keep bashing my head against the wall. So just, that's just like the tiniest part of my story and I'm not gonna sit here and talk about me the whole time, but I want you to know that I've had that early on experience before coaching because when I started this, I had to be willing to check the employee mentality at the door. It's not what Laura just tells you to do. It's what Laura tells you to do in your training, plus the extra things and the extra effort that you put in. When you say you're all in, you have to go from wanting it to owning it. And I find that a lot of coaches are like, well, my coach didn't teach me that. Exactly. That's the employee mentality. We need to learn how to be entrepreneurs. So the best example I can give you guys of teaching you how to go out there and have an experience that will change your perspective and confidence and you'll feel like you're on top of the world is when you picture coaching, I'm a very visual person, picture coaching as being locked into a dark room, okay? And Laura signed you up and put you in a dark room and you're like, what the heck did I just do, right? Although she tells you how to hit success club and she tells you how to get on the team calls, right? The foundation's there, like you know where the floor is, you know where the ceiling is, you know where the walls are. But the part that most people people aren't willing to do is they're not willing to flail around to find the light switch to turn the light on and go, Oh, I get it. And so I want to, I sign up new coaches and I set the expectation early. You're going to be working with me for the next two, three to 10 to 20 years. And I want to help you transform your life. There's probably a lot of cobwebs we have to get through because I've been there, right? I've been doing this almost four years. And when I signed up, 
oh my goodness, guys, I had so much cobwebs to get through. I was broken. I was literally broke. I was a negative Nancy. I was the victim. Oh, I lost my corporate job. Like, trust me, if, if there's any negative Nancy, if there's something that, they, that they've said, I've said it. And so when you're an entrepreneur, Laura's going to lock you in this dark room. And the, the more that you flail around and be like, this is kind of weird. This, I'm uncertain about this. This is the unknown. But what if this doesn't work out for me? Keep flailing. Keep flailing. And you'll find that light switch. So if you ever ask yourself, like, how do people do the unthinkable in this business? Sometimes I look at like, you know, Bonnie, I know is one of Laura's best friends and success partners. And sometimes I look at her business and I'm like, oh, that's like, to me, the unthinkable, right? Like she's achieving the greatest things or whoever your quote unquote idol is, is in this business. And I'll tell you exactly how successful people achieve unthinkable. And this is why I'm a very honest love kind of person because when I grew up, I was a gymnast. And this is why I love my parents for what they did for my upbringing. I was a gymnast for 10 years competitively, and it taught me when you fall off the balance beam, what do you do? You get back up. If your toes aren't pointed enough, what does your coach tell you to do? You get back on and you do it again. And it built up this work discipline that hard work pays off. So it's funny because the Olympian gymnast now, right? Who watches the Olympian gymnast? I hope you guys all watch them, right? Do you just go, holy crap, like, like it's physically impossible what they're doing, just so you know. So it's basically doing the unthinkable. I will tell you that they have those kind of um, results in their routines and their performances because they practice for four years and when they fall off the balance beam and when they step outside the bounds and when their toes aren't pointed, their coach says, get back up, Colleen, do it again. They don't say you suck and they don't beat each other up and they don't ask for perfection. They ask for dedication. In this journey to being an entrepreneur, it's not about getting the 10.0 perfect score. But I promise you that dedication over perfection will win every single time. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about this employee versus entrepreneur. So we're told what to do as employees, right? You clock in 40 hours, you get a paycheck. Not in Beachbot or not in network marketing, right? not as a coach. So you have to understand that it's, we're going to give you the foundation, but it's up to you to lead yourself to really get out there and have that first experience where you're like, okay, I failed. That didn't work. Get back on the balance beam. The more you get used to that feeling of trying and getting the result, whether it's positive or negative, the more you can get yourself used to that feeling, the more you will see success. So if you want to do the unthinkable in your business, you have to become an Olympian of life and business. Guys, we don't tell you to do PD just because we think it's rainbows and butterflies and it makes you feel good, okay? PD is shaping and rewiring and helping you get through all these cobwebs. So when you join coaching, right? Your confidence, your social media, your physical transformation, your ability to make friends, your ability to understand technology, all these different things, everyone joins at different levels. So this is why you can't compare yourself to anyone. You have to own your journey. For me, I say own your mess because it was a freaking mess. And I knew I had to check my mindset at the door. What I was practicing in my life was not giving me the results I wanted. I studied successful people and I said, what are they doing? I did not let fear get in the way because I've had it up to here with life. I was at that point where I didn't care what kind of brick well, I had to burst through. I knew that action every single day would get me to where I wanted to go. I still, guys, have star diamonds on my team. Some of them are my best friends who worry about the how rather than just the do. But how am I going to manage that? I don't know. Fail 10 times before you figure it out. I can tell you guys that I've tried so many things sitting in this very office, and I was willing to take those risks of it not working out. So I always, this is like my question of, are you a coach or are you a CEO? I want you guys, if you have your planner, to go look at it. And if your next week is empty, we've got to chat. <laughs> a CEO is always thinking about the things that, that, they, that they have to do. They're always fine-tuning and sharpening their skills, a.k.a. their PD. They're putting themselves out there to say, you know what, on Tuesday, I'm sure you guys have read Eat That Frog, right? I know on Tuesday, I don't want to do this very thing, but I'm going to do it. So I'm putting it on my schedule. A CEO has a schedule. I guarantee 
that if I was to open Carl Deichler's schedule, it's booked into next year. That's, a, that's like one tiny little piece of advice I can give you guys. And so I, I force myself every single week to book out the scary things. So you can see there's things here that these are priority A, must do to personally grow and have my business grow. So as a coach, we kind of wear these two hats. We are a beach body coach, challenge groups, fitness, shakeology, all the things that we share together, right? We all are beach body coaches. And then there's the CEO hat. This was the biggest life changing moment for me. And I'm going to go back to my story a little bit to talk to you guys about this. But I, I realized, and this was my aha light switch went on in the dark room moment where I realized that the difference between the coach and the CEO in this industry is the ability to serve others. So you go from, oh, I'm kind of scared to share this transformation as a beach body coach to I must share this transformation, although it's scary because I know it will inspire other people. It's opening up and realizing like the fifth level of leadership is, is not to sell challenge packs and to fill up challenge groups, but the fifth level of leadership, according to John C. Maxwell, is when you're dedicated your life to serving others. So I have a lot of people that are like, I've done everything. I've done everything. And I'm like, when are you giving? When are you taking your personal agenda away? But you, most people are still working in the Beachbody Coach module where they're getting through the cobwebs. Your confidence has to grow. You need to have personal development experiences. You need to know, guys, that when the universe puts a challenge in your lap, it's the universe poking you or kind of punching you in the face and being like, hey, remember that time on your uh, new coach questionnaire or whatever you guys do? Like when you told Laura your why, remember this thing you told me that you'll do anything that you need to to get it done? I need you to show me. I need you to show me that you are going to serve people even when it gets tough. Because guys, life's going to throw you a punch and a jab. It's going to knock your teeth out. What happens to the beach body business? Most people put it in the back burner. It's secondary. I knew that if I wanted to become like a public figure where I could say I had an online health and fitness business where I changed and transformed lives, I had to serve others. So when my husband had his first diagnosis with cancer, yeah, you bet. Punch in the face. He was 23 years old. And I was like, okay, uh, I got to serve still. I can, my beach body business is a very top priority to me. So what do I do? Successful people have to focus on what they can control. I couldn't control cancer as much as we all want to. I can't control the things that were happening that I was so angry at. And so I said, okay, what do I do? What do I do? And I had the moment where I realized if I stop doing PD and I stop coming on these team calls and I stop leading my challenge groups and I stop coaching, I'm going to fall apart. I'm going to crumble. That's the part that people don't realize when they're like, oh, I'm going to take a break from Beachbody. I'm like, where are you going to go? <laughs> like this is probably keeping a good portion of your life in motion, right? We grow, we learn, we expand. Regardless, if you ever sell a challenge pack in your life, if you were to dedicate time to workouts, coach training, events for the next five years, you don't think your life's going to be a little brighter? It's going to be a lot brighter. You're, you will have a business. And so focus on the things you can control when the universe puts something in your lap and you're going to go, why? Why is this in my lap? I don't want this to happen to me. The victim in all of us wants to go, why? What the heck? I don't deserve this. But the victor in all of us has to go, universe, girl, I got this. So then, fast forward a year after my husband's diagnosis, and I remember that exact year of the only thing I can do is show up every day. Because I'm the guinea pig to show my team that life is hard, and life is difficult, and we're going to have to push through. Whether it was cancer then or something else that came up in my life, I knew that if I really wanted to prove to my team and, and, and my audience that life's never going to be easy, we got to show up, right? We have to fight back. If I didn't, I would have crumbled. So fast forward a year later, super crazy, December 2015, pushing for my first five-star elite year. December 21st, we get a second diagnosis. It came back, attacking the lungs. We had to move in with his family and he did nine weeks of chemo. And I had the decision again to be like, universe, can I breathe for a second here? 
I had to make that decision of diving in and showing my team we can do hard things. And that experience of being open and vulnerable and only focusing on what I could control, because I could go cry in the corner for hours if I wanted to. I could talk about how I hate cancer. And there was a million things running through my head, but I had to physically train my brain. So if you guys don't think mastering your mindset is part of this, what do you do when life, when, I don't know if I can swear, but when shit hits the fan, okay? Like most people that go, oh my God, my life is over and this and that. But it's like, in the moment, you really have to think about how you can control the scenario as best you can, even when you can. Because I know this, this quote helped me so much when I was like maturing as a coach. Every master was once a disaster. Think about that. Every single successful coach in this business has a disaster story to share. And that's kind of obviously being very, um, like a little over the top. We don't have to say disaster, but I was a disaster. And so you have to make the decision. And this is where I want to talk about the power of your choice. This is where you have the aha moment when you realize you do have the choice to actually become a master. You have the decision. If you've never hit success club, never sold a dollar, if you've never changed a life, you've never made a post, you have the physical and mental ability in this very moment to go and do it. And most of you will be like, no, I don't. That's the coach mentality. I want you guys to grow and prosper over the next, it's gonna take 18 months when you start to focus on like getting through every cobweb. Rather than letting these cobwebs stick to you and become a victim of, well, you know, I have three kids or, you know, well, I'm not confident or I'm shy. I want you to focus on ripping off all these cobwebs for the next 18 months and it's gonna be a journey. People think that like personal transformation is this like finger snapping thing that happens. And if you're ever wondering why there's not 2 million beach body coaches, I'll tell you right now. This is the hardest work you'll ever do. Posting on social media, learning how to hit success club, showing up in a team call, simple, right? The hard part is the inside work. I think the outside work is obviously hard too, but more people do the outside work than they do the inside work. It's the hardest work you'll ever do. So that's why I'm obsessed with this topic because I went from the broke victim, I freaking hate all of this, to the victor because I looked in the mirror, made that decision, and I realized I had to pretty much change everything. I'm not saying you have to change everything. I was the extreme. But know that when you want, when you actually want to own a beach body business, it's about serving others. So that you'll have this transitional period, no matter what rank you're at. I have emeralds and diamonds on my team who serve. And then I have star diamonds who don't serve necessarily. So when you figure out uh, your like personal mission of how you overcome struggles and breakthroughs and when you share that when you can actually duplicate that to other people that you meet you will change lives when people meet me i'm like let me help you i'm not going to fix you but i'm going to help you and i transfer the belief that they can do it too we all have the same trainings pretty much so why isn't everyone successful mindset fear personal growth it's going to take some time to get through those cobwebs okay so CEOs also handle everything differently. So most people will react to a struggle. And I used to do this. I used to react to whether it was a business thing happening or a life thing happening. And now you're going to have to respond with an answer. As a leader, everyone's like, I want to be a leader. I want to be a 15 star. And you don't realize how much like, responsibility that you assume, right? There's this like, huge whole other world sometimes. And the struggles and the obstacles are bigger as your, as your goals grow as well. So you have to handle things differently. The option of I'm too scared to do it isn't really there. Or the option of I don't have time isn't there as a CEO. You make these decisions. Like I always laugh when someone's like, hey, I got a birthday party. I can't make it to Super Saturday. I'm like, okay. <laughs> you know, like it's like these decisions. So here's where I want to talk about confidence. Because I really think that everything comes down to confidence. When I have a new coach that joins me, I can feel or not feel their confidence. And I will know what I can spoon feed them. I can be like, hey, go make your coming out post today. Or hey, go hop in my challenge group and share your before picture. And I know what they're going to be able to quote unquote handle. I know what they're, and then there's other people who I'm like, okay, 
Right now, they don't realize this, but it's a personal growth journey. I'm probably gonna work with them for the year of 2017, and then they're, they're gonna have this big aha moment, and then they can start to help other people. But sometimes coaches don't realize that you have to get through the cobwebs before you can ever start to help other people. So PD, if you really think about, like back in the day when I was a new coach, there were only three vital behaviors. There was only invite, uh, product of the product, and personal development. First two, I'm like, I know how to invite, even though I sucked at it. I know how to work out. Thirdly, personal development was really the only one I could do extra of. I could put as much as I want into personal development and it would help me. You are your business. So it's not like, oh, when my business gets to 500 bucks a week, then I'll invest in my business. Well, girlfriends and boyfriends, I don't know how many guys you have on your team, I have a bunch. You are your business. So you have to get there before your business gets there. Um, so stop resisting the hard work. <laughs> like, and I'm very honest with my new coaches about this. I'm like, guys, like sharing on social media, that might be different for you. Don't resist the hard. Sharing about how like you, like I, I just made a post before I hopped on this call about I know my friends and family judge me. I am okay with it. Those are my exact words because I've come to the point now where I feel unstoppable enough in my mission and I love it so much. I claim what I want, so I say it. When you get to that point of giving yourself permission, you will start to serve others. It's this amazing feeling where you just want to run to the top of a mountaintop, bring 100,000 people with you and be like, let's do this. So if you guys aren't waking up in the morning, having the mentality of an Olympian athlete, so pretend that you are Gabby, the little cute gymnast tomorrow morning. And I want you to compare what you did this morning to what you think Gabby does in the morning and tell me if you're an Olympian athlete in life and business. We'll use that example, okay? Most people are like snooze. Oh my God, it's freaking raining. Oh my God, I'm at Success Club Zero. Ugh, I don't want to get in the really warm shower. Ugh, you know, like we're not even out of bed yet and we're like, bleh. <laughs> so tomorrow, you're going to have to be aware. And I'm sure there's many of you that want to punch me in the face. Back in the day when I used to hear Shalene Johnson and Turbo Fire be like, go, go, I hated her. But there will come a point where you're like, okay, I've got to listen to what these people have been telling me in personal development books. And this isn't like Colleen Curtis PD, this is everything I've learned in all together through experience in books. You'll come to that point where you will listen and absorb and apply. Oh, I'm out of breath. All right, I want to talk a little bit about kind of failing because how many of you, you don't have to raise your hand because I, I won't call you guys out, but how many of you at some point in your journey have said, I'm afraid to fail, right? All of us. <laughs> I'm afraid to fail. Well, I have awesome news. You cannot fail at this business. And the only time you fail is when you quit or don't try. Like take a baby step. I don't care. I don't care if it's the teeniest, tiniest baby step. Do you know what that baby step will do for your life? It will empower you. And as, as you take another step, it will empower you. And you have this beautiful confidence account. It's invis invisible. And every single day you add and subtract to your confidence account. When you do your workout, you add. If I don't do my workout, I subtract. See how decisions play into this? Guys, if you buy the Oreos, you're going to eat the freaking Oreos, okay? Your decisions add up to your life. Your decision to not make a post after this team call and share with your audience something that you learned that can help them, does that add or subtract? I love giving. Who is more excited to give a birthday gift, you or the person getting it? You're like, oh my God, open it. I'm so excited for you to open it. This is why being a giver is a huge part of this business because it gets you excited and you add to your confidence account. If you eat the burrito with extra cheese and sour cream and you feel like crap at the end, you deduct. And I'm not saying I don't eat burritos, but I'm just saying, you, know, you guys know the feeling I'm talking about, right? You're like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Or when you do something awesome, even if it's so scary, you add to it. So think about today. What did you do today to add to your confidence account? And this is why I'm really thankful for my upbringing is because my parents would sit me down and be like, no, you get your stuff done and then you go play. It's kind of like you t tell your family to eat their dinner and then they can have dessert, right? So you got to look yourself in the mirror and here's my golden rule. When you go to bed tonight and you lay your head down on the pillow, ask yourself, did I give today my all? 
If your answer is yes, you'll probably sleep like a baby. If your answer is no, you just have to say, it's okay, I will do better tomorrow. We don't have time to beat ourselves up and say, oh, I suck, and this and that, and I didn't do everything, because we're never gonna get everything done. Remember that. You can't do everything, but you can do anything. So starting tomorrow, you can wake up and you'll act like Gabby, that amazing Olympian athlete, because you can make a decision like that. And most people don't believe me when I say that you can make a decision like that. I don't know if you guys have been to Tony Robbins, but it's time to invest if you haven't. But here's my example. Guys, if you're really tired and you don't feel like getting up to work out, well, guess what? Your house is on fire. Is your butt going to get up and it's going to work out? You bet it is. So physically and mentally, you can actually change your state like that. It's the power of choice, habit building. You've got to look at this opportunity as every decision I've ever made since the day I've signed up equals where I am right now. And I think a lot of it is personal growth. I'll usually take a look at a coach's personal growth and I'll say, all right, where are we at with this? Oh yeah, no, I'm not really ready for that yet. I'm like, okay, then you just gotta be patient. You can't have the, the, this expectation to be a CEO if you're still saying no. You have to become a yes person, even if it makes you wanna throw up on your keyboard or throw up at Super Saturday. So people are always like, I wanna lead. I wanna become this leader. Here's my challenge. I want you guys to reach out to your local Super Saturday. I want you to say, hey, how can I help with the event? I don't care if you share your story, check in tickets, be the water girler boy, do something and get involved. That will give you a rush of emotion. I remember being in that, the, that seat being like, okay, someday I'm gonna have to be up there. Someday I'm gonna have to be sharing and inspiring. So that's my challenge to you guys to get over this fear. And if you really wanna become a CEO, you gotta do those kind of things. All right, I have one more example for you guys that I've been talking about a lot, about like this whole fighting thing. I'm very visual. I don't know about you guys, but anytime that, you know, I'm like, you know, I don't really feel like it today. It's like, boom, these visuals pop in my head. So just know that I guarantee there will come a day. And I, I hope that this doesn't like scare anyone, but there will come a day where you're like, I feel like I'm failing. I feel like the world just hates me and I can't do this. Like I kind of almost guarantee that feeling. <laughs> I don't know. At least I've had that feeling where I'm like, I just feel like I'm rock bottom in my life and business, which is such an exaggeration. It's the entrepreneur roller coaster, right? Um, and it's funny because as we're going up, we're like, yes, this is the coolest thing ever. I'm going to Cancun. I'm going to Punta Cana. I'm going to Summit. And oh my God, everyone said no to me this month and I'm really missing all my goals. And then like, oh, we're going to Riviera Maya and whatever, you know, whatever your roller coaster looks like. But it's when you're down, what you do there, that will equal success for you because anyone can do the easy stuff. But when you focus on what's hard and be solution oriented, take action, you will start to see results and you will start to come up. So my rule is, um, I call it the fighting ring. And it was so perfect when Core to Force came out because I was like getting so frustrated with like just people in general where they were like, Colleen, how did you overcome like cancer twice with your husband and you had to move and you had this business and by the way I had mono last year so I was like I was like on my deathbed and didn't know I had mono I was so mentally focused on everything else that I forgot about me for a second and I had mono and I didn't know and so I was just like look in the mirror you got this girl look in the mirror you got this girl and I became my own biggest cheerleader but when core to force came out I I told my team, I said, I want you to, and I always use this box, apparently I like boxes, this is the fighting ring, okay? I want you to picture UFC fight, and you walk in and the energy is insane, and guess who's in the boxing ring? It's you, and it's life, and you two are beating the living daylights out of each other, but your audience, all those people that paid money to get tickets to come watch you watch, or watch you fight life, they're waiting and watching. That's your family, those are your kids, those are your team members, and those are your haters on Facebook, and everyone else that's kind of, oh, maybe I can be a coach someday. They are watching you fight life. That's why it's so important for you to fight back. So guys, if you were literally in this fighting ring and life was to punch you and everyone's watching, would you stay there on the floor? Hell no. You would get your butt right back up and you would fight back. That's all this is. And so the next time you guys get a jab or a punch to the face, I want you to remember this visual of what do I do? I get back up. Give yourself 20 minutes. If you need 20 hours to recuperate, 
take a breath, and then tomorrow is a new day. I've got myself down to like 20 minutes and I can turn it around. Could you imagine how much faster you can start to see success in life and business when you overcome adversity faster and faster? Don't let it control you. Those are Debbie Downers. Those are naysayers. That's the old me and those are the victims. Um, so that's my fighting ring example. And it was so funny when Core to Force came out, our, our uh, like motto for the team was like fight. When someone had a question, I'm like, I don't know, fight for it. Like, I don't know everything. I'm still learning. Why don't you get out there and try 10 things? They're like, wait, what? You're not just going to tell me how to fix it? No, that's not my job. My job is to help you believe that you can do it and that you'll figure it out. And they're like, okay. And the people who can live or the people who can live with that decision of, ew, I have to go fail and there, I might get punched by life and my teeth might fall out. Like, oh man. This is why, guys, mastering your mindset is so important. And if you don't take it serious, I don't know. I, I don't know if this business will ever work for those people who don't take the personal growth side. Because I can sit here and type my little fingers away and invite all the people. But if I'm not excited to help them change their life, get these cobwebs off, because I'm not confident in myself, how am I ever going to have a business? Um, okay, so PD, last thing. And then if you guys have questions. Um, so I think there's three types of PD and like people have like told me I'm the PD queen. And I'm like, no, I have just looked at life and I was just like, bring it on. <laughs> so when I had mono and the cancer and all this crazy stuff, and guys, I've dropped rank. I've gone backwards in money. Like I've had the craziest guinea pig things happen to me. And I was like, okay, I'll be the guinea pig. And now I see every challenge as an opportunity. I don't wince at challenge anymore. I'm serious enough to get like strong enough and fight for it. So through PD, um, I think coaches get too comfortable with 10 minutes a day. I think that they're like, oh, I read you were a badass for 10 minutes today. I'm going to go change the world. And then life hits them in the face and they're like, oh, wait, I'm not ready. <laughs> so PD is awesome, but there's three kinds. You need a you book, which is the rainbows and butterflies and you are a badass and you can, you know, jump off the top of a mountain and you'll live like whatever makes you scream from the mountaintops. Okay. Those are like the easy books, which is why we all like them. But if that's the only kind of work you do, that's why you're staying stuck. So the second kind is a bit is a business book. So things like go pro go for no. I love six months to six figures. Ignore the title, read the book. It's like a workbook, changed my life. Um, and the last business book I'll recommend is the 10X rule. So when my husband was in treatment on January 1st, so that was December 21st, he had just started. So like Christmas Eve was like a really rough night and we found out my grandma passed away. So I had to fly home on January 1st. And I'm in the airport in Boston, like universe, like I might just fall on the floor and cry right now, but I'm not going to do that because I'm going to fight for it and we're going to be okay. And guys, don't think I don't face feelings or reality because that's not the case. I just focus on what I can control. And that to me is personal growth and overcoming these struggles rather than becoming a victim to them. So I very much deal with them. Um, but I remember being in the airport, like I need a sign that like, I'm going to be okay. I needed some hope. And I looked in the bookstore and the 10 X rule, I swear had like this aura ring around it. And it was like, pick me up. And I just needed something to dive into because most people, when they struggle and they're hurt and they're sad, what do they do? They digress and they pull back. I had to go in. I didn't want to go out. I had to go in. So I dove into this book and it taught me so much about what I needed to do and show up. And I actually loved it so much that I made an academy for my team called the 10X Success Academy. I really want to teach people like what it takes to be successful at this. And it's not easy. I never promise easy. Um, okay, so that's number two is the business book. And then the number three, this isn't a book. Just so you know, I always get messages after and they're like, what's the name of that book? And I'm like, it's not a book. It's experience. So we hide behind our computers too much. We hide behind books too much. We hide behind selfies too much. You've got to get out there and be human and have a human connection. The reason why people have life-changing aha moments at Summit is because it's the first time you meet Laura and it's the second time you meet your success partner. And when you hug them and when you're talking and the energy is in person and you have that experience, you never want to leave. When you're having a good day, guys, and you're connecting and people are awesome and someone holds the door for you, it's a beautiful thing, right? But if you just stay in your office and hide behind a PD book and just share on social media because you're still living the victim life, you're never going to have the experience or opportunity to see life in color. 
I remember as a new coach, I had to max out my credit card to drive 10 hours. I had to do a rental car um, for me to get down to an event because where I live, there's like nothing. We're working on it. We have small events now, but I'm like, I need human connection. And even if you're introverted, go. <laughs> you need experience. I have two of my most successful coaches on my team are introverted. They're shy. You can be successful at this if you have an experience that will create so much momentum in your heart and your soul that you're just like, I have to do this. So don't hide. That's why I challenge you guys to do the Super Saturday thing. Reach out to your local people and say, how can I help? Get out there and have that experience. If I didn't have the experience of failing flat on my face with this business and having to overcome life at the same time, I wouldn't be where I am. So now I want you to celebrate your challenges. Look at your challenge and be like, this is awesome because then I'm going to show my audience they can do hard things. But if you go, oh, why? You're never going to give yourself the chance to show people they can do hard things and you're not serving others. Um, so I'm out of breath again, but that is what I have for you guys tonight. I'm really sorry that was 45 minutes. I get excited sometimes. Normally I try to keep it to 30, but. Do not apologize. First of all, I have two pages of notes. Absolutely <laughs> incredible. Um, I have a question. And while I tell you my question, I would love for somebody else to either after me, unmute yourself and ask a question or type it in the chat box because let's pick a brain for as long as we can. Um, <laughs> yes. You use this, you said this a lot that you're not a leader unless you're serving people. And the fifth level of leadership is not just getting out there and be a salesperson, but it's to serve people. So what does that look like in your business? Because service um, could easily be come um letting people run over you for the point of oh i'm serving them i'm being a martyr but how do you serve and lead what does that mean so when i think of serving and this is like in like calling little world when i think of that because i could totally see that happening to some people it's when you have something that other people want that you can give them and that's what makes this business so special like for example there might be moms on this call i don't have kids yet we're working on that but i don't have the ability to give like my, like my target market isn't like mothers necessarily, right? And so I'm not necessarily helping a mom be able to like quit her job and stay home with her kids, although I've done that. But my goal, like for my mission statement, and this is day two of my training, this is what I have my coaches do, um, they come up with their mission statement. And it's how do you want to help other people through beach body coaching? And you have to, that's a lot of soul searching. It's not just gonna come to you on day two of training, but I get them thinking in this frame of mind where you're gonna have a specialty where I could throw you at the front of a Super Saturday and you're gonna be able to share your heart about something that only you can share. You're gonna have an experience, you're gonna have a challenge, you're gonna have an obstacle. There's gonna be something that you can overcome. So for me, like, yeah, I love challenge groups. They're all fine and dandy, but my passion is to help people create supplemental income so that they can travel more. Like that's kind of my thing. And so to me, that's a gift. Travel is experience. It is life changing. Like when I moved, everything changed. And so I was raised where you go, you get married, you have kids, you buy a house, and then you just pretty much get old. And that was it. And I was like, I don't want that. <laughs> so I'm helping people. Think of it this way, guys. You're interrupting people's thinking patterns. Everyone else out there can go do and be in their tunnel vision world. We are basically interrupting thinking patterns. So when you're serving others, what's your specialty? What are you passionate about? Yes, I know you want to help people lose weight. We all do. But what makes you excited about helping people lose weight? Is it throwing out their old genes? Is it helping them with meal planning? Because that's not me. I suck at meal planning. I eat like cold chicken every day. You know, like you're all going to have your specialty. So take your strengths and your passions. And if you don't know it, you just haven't done enough personal growth yet. You haven't had the experience. Because if you knew me three years ago, I would not have ever told you public speaking on mastering your mindset. But I had experiences and that came to me. So that was a really long answer, but. No, it wasn't. It was perfect. Okay. Another, another question. I am totally on board with you as far as like the three different breakdowns of personal development. Genius. Um, so for those of you taking notes or who need to take notes, these are the three things she said. The first is a you book, which I've never heard these described that way, which is like an affirmation pretty much of you're awesome. <laughs> I thought you're right. That is more fun to read than like I did yeah. books of what you need to improve. The second is a business book, um, skills, sharpening that area. The third is experience, like full immersion kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, can you recommend 
I'll just say for a, a coach within the first three months, because I feel like that's the most pivotal time for them to have a light bulb moment to turn on their light switch and say, okay, I, I can do this. So in those three buckets, what is your recommendation for personal development? Um, so I, it's funny. I, I'm sorry. My answers are long, but okay. I'm like a detective. I swear Like when I meet someone, I like know where they're at in their life. And even if they're like totally faking it because I was that person who was faking it and everything was dandy. And so now I'm like, Oh, I, I totally know like the confidence is in there or like, you know, when people adjust their clothes, like when they're in front of other people, like they're not comfortable with their body or just like have become this detective of what people need. Um, because I've been so in tune with myself. And so when I get someone on the phone and they're like, Hey, Colleen, I'm really excited to chat today. I can tell that a book like you are a badass or spirit junkie. Those are like two books. I usually kind of start people with if someone's like, Hey, so, uh, how much commission do I earn on a challenge pack again? And like, so how long do I have to do this to earn like a hundred dollars a week? Then I'm like, okay, you need the entrepreneur roller coaster, and you might want to read, you know, I, I usually will like do a GoPro or some other type of business book. So I really kind of read the person, although my recommendations are you are a badass to really prime them because it's such a fun book, right? Like you can't go wrong with that. And I tell them to take their time on that book, highlight it, write in it, which is why I don't like audio and I don't like anything but paperback because my books are like, I study. I highlight and I, if I love a sentence, I make myself rewrite it because there's something about pen rewrite. It goes in my brain, into my veins. And I really want my team to become, guys, this is becoming a student of personal growth. That's really what it is. It's a student of growth. So audio is great. I get it. I'm not saying that you can't do it, but it's different when you're, when your two kids are screaming and you're cooking dinner, how much are you getting of that? You know, like you need your me time. Um, and then the experience also kind of depends on the recommendation. Um, I I'm into Gabby Bernstein big right now. You have to be ready to receive her material though. Like if you're not at a good point of your personal growth journey, you will hate her stuff because it's deep. <laughs> it is real deep. It's a big reflection book. She makes you sit down and do breathing exercises. And I'm not personally religious, but she does talk about like, you know, God and stuff. And I just replace it with the word universe. And I'm totally comfortable with that. Um, although I grew up 16 years Catholic. So um, you just kind of have to be flexible with stuff like that. But like Gabby Bernstein does events all over the U.S. You can get to an event. She teaches you meditation practices. Like that's totally my jam. Um, or Tony Robbins. Everyone has to go to Unleash the Power Within. But you've got to be ready. You can't walk in there and be like, "What the heck is this?" You got to be like, "I'm a student. I'm here to. I'm here to learn." So, <laughs> um, Bern Bernstein. B e r n s t i n. Okay. So her two best books, her newest one is The Universe Has Your Back. If you are ready to receive a message like that, just like here, The Universe Has Your Back. Most people are like, yeah, right. <laughs> if you're ready to hear that, read that book. Awesome. All right, we had a question. Somebody said, what's the most effective way from your experience to get your voice heard? Is it like, what platform do you use most? We just had this conversation kind of, but Facebook, Instagram, um, Facebook pages, live events. Sure. So, I mean, Facebook Live right now, absolutely. And you're going to fall on your face. I mean, not you personally. I'm just kind of talking to everyone. You'll flail around with it. I still kind of go on tangents sometimes. So here's my tips for Facebook Live. If you guys could see my desk right now, thank God you can't. But everything for me is like these little notes. And I have like three bullets for everything. And I'm like, okay, here's my topic. I'll ramble. And then I'll be like, oh, back to my three points. So I, I make sure I stay on task. If you're new and you don't quite have a following, keep your videos three, four, five minutes. If you have a bigger following, you can probably go longer. Some people go 20 minutes and people will listen. The key for Facebook Live is to engage. You're not speaking to your audience. You're asking them to engage. So ask questions um, and don't say, okay, guys, I'm going to wait for everyone to get on. Everyone hops off. Okay. You just got to go. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and so like when people hop on, say hello to them. So engage, think about like, how can I serve these people today? How can I let them feel the love? Maybe they're having a shitty day. They're on their lunch break. I just think Facebook live is a way that you can leave impressions on people in a good way and show your personality and your confidence. Because when you see someone confident, don't you feel like it's a breath of fresh air? You're like, I want to feel like that. So it's a great way to do that. Um, I love Instagram personally as well, because I have like a lifestyle adventure brand. That's me. But if you are not good at pictures, 
and you don't have the whole iPhone or whatever phone picture thing down, just maybe Instagram is not your thing because Instagram is photo based. You've got to know how to tell a story, have good photos. You got to edit, you got to filter. Like you don't have to get all like super Gucci with it, but you've got to be able to have like those basic things. And trust me, mine sucked back in the day. It's something I've worked on. Um, personal reflection book. Is, is that, um, I think they're talking about the Gabby Bernstein. Oh, um, so she has two. I started with spirit junkie. And then while, when I ordered spirit junkie, the universe has your back came out and it was like her hot new 2016 book. So I ordered it. I stopped spirit junkie halfway and I got into universe has your back. And then I finished them both. Like I can read 20 books at once and be okay. Cause I just am like, ah, uh. <laughs> impressive. I like it. Probably not 20. That's an exaggeration, but like four or five. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can read, I probably have like five right now that are a couple of chapters in. So. And you guys, if a book sucks, like next, you know, I, there's so many half books. I'm not going to make myself read a book unless, if it's not speaking to me. There's a lot of books I've done that. So don't be afraid to do that. I seriously, I'm sitting here. I feel like I could just rewrite your quotes in the team page all week. And they're going to be like, yes, that's a so <laughs> motivating. So on point. I've never heard that before. So I am so thankful. Um, I don't know if anyone else has questions. They're probably thinking, oh my gosh, I have so much growth to be done. Like, cause everyone whines and complains about the troubles that they have, but they are like, oh dang, she, she almost lost her husband twice. Like you <laughs> have had life happen to you. We all have life happen to us. Totally get that. Yeah. But to be able to overcome it. And I love your example of the light switch, loving the example of being coached like a dark, you're in, in you're in a dark room and you have to be willing to walk and risk tripping and touching somebody awkward <laughs> in the dark and then yep. chilling the wall and getting the corner and then finally turning the light switch on. It might take a week for some people. It might take a year for some people, depending on how confident and how okay they are with flailing. I love that example. I will probably always use it. <laughs> Good. I'm glad. And I, I feel like too, I'll let you guys go in one second, but um, Katrina, I like that name. That's cute. Um, to have your voice heard as well is we, we get paid to be professional storytellers. Mm -hmm. Work with your coach, if Laura's your upline or whoever, learn from, this is why I think studying other successful coaches is good because you learn a little bit about storytelling. Obviously you're not taking their story, but you're like, okay, I see how they arrange the posts, this and that. And it's just good to kind of study them. Right. But we are paid to be professional storytellers and I have to be able to go your paid, go to your page and I've got to know your life. Mm -hmm. I don't need to hear the negative. I don't need to hear the positive. I just need to know your life, whether it's messy, but what are you doing to grow and to provide solutions? So it's not the me song. I want to be clear about that. It's not, here's what I did today. I did my workout. Here's my shake. That's a beach body coach. A CEO is like, you know what? Didn't want to do my workout today, but I pressed play anyway. I threw my headphones on. You're teaching others how to do what you do through your posts. You guys see that you're speaking to your ideal client. So best way I think to have your voice heard is sharing your story on Facebook because Instagram is tiny, but it's photos on Instagram. So I just wanted to make sure I said that. That's a really good point. The, first of all, the difference between the two and secondly, it's not just about appearing like you have it all together. Some people, I get people rejecting coaching all the time or giving me objections. So I'm just not ready. And I want to go through this next challenge with you first. And I'm like, I get that, but it's based out of fear because they feel like, well, I won't really have my life together until I lose this extra <laughs> pounds and then I'm not going to feel confident enough. I'm like, you're never going to feel confident enough. Just do it. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of like my biggest struggle. Cause I, I was a self-starter, like life put me through the ringer so much that I just had enough to hear. So I was just go. So I try to teach coaches just go. And I'm like, Oh wait, they didn't start running yet. Like, well, come on. you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome all right guys. Well, I don't want to take her time anymore. Cause I know that she is, you know, giving us an hour of her life in her brain her heart, and she served us. You guys follow that. She served us. So I hope you feel warm and fuzzy. <laughs> after this Hopefully. I've learned so much. I know, um, raise your hand guys. If you gain like five amazing aha moments, aha yeah. moment as in like, you're going to actually take action. Even if it was just one, I'd be happy. <laughs> five because there had to be at least 20 for everybody, but five is minimal. Oh. 
So. All right, guys. Well, I'm actually going to be doing more live videos on my Facebook stream starting Wednesday. So if you follow my like page, I'm going to be doing talks like this for the network because like 79 people asked me to do this call and I couldn't do 79 calls. So you guys got lucky. Um, but I'll be over on my like page. So you guys can come ask questions if there's more. Awesome. Thank you so much. And guys, uh, Moxie, I'll post, I'll upload this recording and post it in the team call as well. So you can send it to all your stragglers. <laughs> Bye guys. All right. Bye. Thank you so much.